good evening uh, or good morning everyone uh, welcome to the meshery development meeting uh, today is 28th of july and uh, we are 3 minutes in and we have 20 of 24 people on the call so let's get started before we go into the topics uh, we have a tradition here where uh, newcomers get to introduce themselves to the community so this will help us understand better and uh, help you engage more in the community and engage more in the projects so uh, is there anyone who is uh, new, new on this call Uh, uh i'm seeing some names so i'm just going to call out some names uh robert would you like to introduce yourself hello yes can you hear me yeah yes so hi um i'm new here for uh how to say uh i'm not maybe in joining your company or layer 5 um i'm only getting in touch with uh, layer 5 um so i'm starting to run it uh, i made some issues i want to learn it about more uh now you guys uh and maybe uh, in the future to work it because we in our company will be use it and make some benchmarks on some tests uh using your uh merge services awesome uh, yeah uh, I, uh, i saw some some of the bugs that you raised and uh, we have it on the agenda today so we'll try to discuss it and uh, some of the bugs you raised were fixed yesterday so that's good and yeah we will try to discuss it today as well thank you for introducing thanks okay uh, so um is there anyone else who would like to introduce themselves uh if you are if you haven't introduced on this particular call then you can also introduce here can i go first hi yeah sure yeah yeah hello guys uh, my name is barik i'm currently a penamo penamo team engineering student in Nanang Technological University Singapore. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, um Steve Miller here. Um I I've, I've been on the call and I'm in the GitHub group, but uh I haven't been participating uh in this capacity for for some time. I did upload a bunch of documents, uh templates and what not, but um uh, yeah, that's it. Good to be here. Thank you Barik thank you Stephen uh, good to see both of you here and uh, yeah Stephen it's good to have you back uh, I think Barik you you are you have already made some PRs right What's that Oh uh, yep I mean, yep Barik So yeah uh, Barik has already been making some waves in the community he has been uh, although he joined recently he has been making some a couple of prs here and there so great to see uh thank you guys uh, uh anyone else uh, new on the call well uh, hi uh, i'm not new to the community i joined a week ago but this is the first time in the development meeting uh i'm megna from india and i'm a senior at iit bilai and i recently joined the community as i told you and so i'm majorly a front end developer and i'm looking for some uh just playing around with meshery right now i'm seeing how how it works and learning about kubernetes and stuff uh, so yeah i'm ha happy to work here so i'm looking for some looking forward to making some contributions here so that's pretty much it yeah thank you megana uh, <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure that there are a couple of open areas that you can look into if you are interested in front end so uh, meshery ui is one such area uh, and i'm sure like someone will 
uh, reach out to you in in zoom chat or slack like if you are interested in contributing sure thank uh, you thank for introducing uh, uh, anyone else uh, would you like to introduce themselves yeah uh, hello am i audible yeah yeah hi, so, yeah hi everyone i am kushal so i am not new to this community i joined uh, around uh, two weeks ago slack and made my first pr first timers only pr to meshri io repo and now yeah i'm exploring the platform and yeah is setting up my connections like i i, I think i messaged you on slack as well like on setup yeah, yeah. Uh, if you yeah. remember yeah uh, so yeah i'm exploring the community and yeah hoping to do more contribution to that uh thank you yeah uh, so we have a newcomers call that happens every thursday so if you are facing some issues setting up your development environment or if you would like to know more about all the different uh, projects that layer 5 community does you can join the thursday's newcomers call uh, thank you for introducing kushal uh, so uh, anyone else yeah hi my name is narayan i am from india a second year student from bit dur and yeah i joined the group today looking forward to contribute to the community yeah that's it yeah Th thank you narayan uh, uh welcome to the community so yeah, uh, yeah uh, so i think everyone was able to introduce themselves if you didn't get a chance you can introduce yourself in the chat or if you have any mic issues please introduce yourself in the chat so uh, let's move on to the uh, today's uh, topic uh, so for first up i would like to uh, talk about the meshery ctl command tracker so uh, as you can see like this is a uh, the entire uh, features and the feature roadmap of meshery ctl which is the command line interface for meshery is uh, public and is in this uh, particular uh, spreadsheet so this is how we uh, this is how we are able to decide what what, what to work on and uh, what features to add and what features are missing and uh, all this stuff like if you are if you have bugs uh if you are in need of a new feature and things like that so uh the meshery ctl command so every pr or every changes to meshery ctl should be updated in the meshery ctl contract so uh, because uh, this this would be the central source of truth for everything that is happening in meshery ctl so most of you have contributed uh, to meshery ctl and uh, these changes are not reflected in the meshery ctl command tracker and uh, so I, i i i don't know if you have noticed but if you check uh, a pr that is mar marked with the meshery ctl label uh, we have a bot that reminds people to uh, update the meshery ctl command tracker so this is so that we get like we are able to track it centrally and uh, make changes centrally and everyone knows what is happening so that is something to uh, be aware of uh yeah with that uh, let's uh, is suhani on the call yes uh, so suhani would you like to give a walk through of your uh, recent changes and meshery ctl app command hi sure um let me share my screen yeah sure okay okay so uh okay so um we have added a new sub command in meshery ctl so before that let uh, let us know what is meshery ctl is so meshery ctl is a command line interface for meshery where we can manage life cycle 
management for meshery or we can manage a uh, life cycle for service mesh and uh, we can do many more related to pattern management as well so uh, what we have done now is we have added a sub command which is app so it is to manage uh, applications it is pretty much similar to what we have in pattern so um, let's see what we can do with the app sub command okay Okay, so um, as you can see, we have uh, four available subcommands. So with the help of this app subcommand, I can own onboard my application. I can offboard my application. I can list all the available applications, or I can view my applications on the basis of name or application ID. So let's try onboarding one of the apps. So okay, before that, I should. Uh, uh, mention that I have already my mesh C running. Okay, as you can see, I can ping the Kubernetes and the adapters which we have. Few few of the adapters are not pingable, uh, so we can look on that uh, later. So, okay, so uh, my mesh C is running, and this is what I have uh, done to uh, to have my mesh C running. So, with the help of this, uh, I have my mesh C running on localhost. And I have all, uh, already logged into my ministry. Okay, so let's try onboarding my app, uh, which is on board. And I don't know what to do with onboard. So let's see. Okay, I have hyphen f flag. So I need to provide path to my app file to onboard my app. Okay, so. Um, I have taken sample uh, application from here, uh, which is already available in the meshery documentation. And you can see it's type as application. So I already have it on my local host, uh, which is, sorry, which is saved as my, my app.yaml. And I have given it name application pattern two, and its type is application. Um, also, um, uh, here you can see all the available applications. So I, uh, I have application pattern and application pattern one uh, from the past. So let's try creating application pattern two with the help of this onboard command. Okay. So let me provide my um, application file path. So this is my path. Okay, so it says I have successfully deployed my application and I can check here now uh, by reloading it again. So I have application pattern two in here. And so I have my application pattern two, I can list it. I can use list. Okay, so list will show me all the applications I have. So I have three applications, so it will show me all the applications. And with the help of view, I can just um, mention the specific application name, um, which is application pattern two. So it will show me um, details regarding this application. Uh, I have application ID for this. So uh, instead of name, I can search using application ID as well. So it will give me same results, the application ID and application name. So these are the three commands and with the help of off board, let's see what we can do uh, with off board. Okay. okay, so for off board, I have to provide my path to application file to off board up a particular application. So I will do hyphen F and my application path. So it will just delete my application from the mesh. So, yeah. Uh, that's about Meshri CPL app. And now I will stop sharing my screen.
uh, anybody have any questions and comments for Suhani? Okay, I have one question. Uh, what will happen if we will only search Metri CTL app application? Will we get all the fee which has the matching name or we will just get one? Okay, um, so for now we will get one, but I will work on that to get uh, all the applications with same name. Sure. And uh, one question, how does this particular command is adding value to this big, uh, instead of kubectl. Sorry. How does this command add values to my like you know day to day work instead of kubectl? Because kubectl also does the same. Okay, so uh, you are managing this from meshri, not kubectl. Uh, so. Uh, there will be a one-stop shop to manage everything like apps or your service mesh or uh, whatever we have like patterns. No, okay, but so when, I, when I work with the command line, so yeah. it doesn't make uh, any difference if I put in kubectl or message ctl because all are in the same yeah, place. I'll grab that. I'll field that one. That's a great question. Well, uh, um, there's, there's a couple of things here. One is that it isn't outside of the outside of onboard offboard, which is clearly clearly of of a mesh type uh, nomenclature or vernacular. Um, the there's a couple of things. One one is that the command itself that was just shown is in its initial. Um, uh, there will be more to the command later. Things like um, potentially separating your like the the terms onboard and offboard actually differentiating between the deployment of an app versus um, a previously deployed app and moving it onto the mesh or removing it from a mesh <clears throat> um, it is isn't something that Suhani just demoed um, in its current form taken onto its own as just that single subcommand app. It's like huh. Yeah, no, there's not, there's not a compelling reason to use that command versus just um, kubectl that you're familiar with, where it becomes in the future, like I, I gave one small example of like, actually that can be very helpful to on, on our offboard, um, you know, leave the app it, um, deployed, but on our offboard, okay, that, that's helpful. Yeah, I see that. But also what becomes more compelling is a little bit of what Suhani was alluding to, which is um, that, you know, if you're into managing your systems with Meshery <clears throat> um, and you want to, at the same time that you're onboarding, make sure that uh, your uh, application is also passing a performance um, test at the same time, or that you want to apply it, like you want to onboard that app, but also apply a pattern to it, which could be like a canary pattern or it could be a, a pattern that defines a, a load test or or like if you're combining that capability with any of the other sort of meshery specific capabilities, then they start to go hand in hand. Um, and it starts to become, it's not, a, it's, it's not about using meshery CTL for purposes of onboarding your app. It's sort of a side note to the fact that you're using meshery CTL to uh, do something specific to, to meshery, whether that's a service mesh pattern or um, applying a filter that, that maybe you're doing in a way in which, you know, is unique to Meshery. Then th these are supplemental and, and helpful commands in that way. Like, um, yeah, th there's, there's a few, I, as time goes on, there'll be um, additional examples where I think it'll be clear that um, it, um, where, oh, hey, this, this, this is helpful, or this is unique to a Mesh, and this is why I'm using Meshery CTL or just Meshery for that case to manage my app in context of the service mesh makes is helpful, additive, and unique. Today, it's not compelling or that, that isn't what's being demoed. No, oh, why I'm telling is like, we have a command with message CTL patterns, which is much more oh, to do yeah. Yeah. that. So how does it add? Yeah, that's actually, that's a great question, Samir, actually, that's I'm not, placating you like I was when I said the other question was a great question. Yeah, um, is that uh, that's a great question. And because 
if you think about it, patterns are, my goodness, quite powerful. You can describe an application in there. Okay. So then maybe you don't need the app command. Well, you can also describe a performance test in there, right? Yeah. So then why do you need the perf command? Oh, geez. You can also describe filter management. You can also describe canaries. You can also do like, you can basically eventually describe all the things using this um, patterns methodology. Okay, can, can you also provision a service mesh um, just you know, using the pattern? And yeah. Okay, so what do we need the mesh CTL mesh command for? My goodness, like all of the commands immediately come under fire, right? In the face of the, the all powerful pattern command. And so, um, yep, I think that that statement that you're making stands onto its own sort of with the, with the period at the end. Yeah. The reason then, okay, what justifies the investment in some of these other more specific, more limited commands, um, convenience or um, the, the notion that you may desire to not control, like here, I'll give it, here's it, um, it, it, here's the, here's part of the difference is you can go to kubectl, you can do kubectl, apply this manifest, this, you know, um, a, a large, you know, a large set of YAML. Good. And maybe that's all that you generally ever do. Like that's the way that you manage those things. Or you're like, well, no, actually, hold on. I need to troubleshoot something. Or I just need a temporary thing. Or like, I, I'm just going to do a kubectl. I don't even remember. Is it a kubectl run? Uh, or a cube, like if you just want to deploy a one-off container, I don't even remember the command, uh, but kubectl, maybe I'm thinking of Docker, but kubectl run nginx on expose port 9090 or whatever. That like, oh, okay. And that's, that's convenient because I actually didn't have some previously written manifest that describes Nginx when I just needed to get an Nginx going and do, do some stuff. And moreover, what I really wanted to do was like, I need to do that inside of a script as well. And I didn't want to have a manifest file there. I just wanted to, you know, quickly do, you know, like, like there are these other use cases in which a little less declarative, a little more imperative, a little more, a little less um, uh, Git based, if you will, and a little more um, ad hoc based. Uh, hence, I you know the justification for those other sub commands that are specific to your use case. Because you can imagine someone comes over and says, "Oh, great! Now I want I want to use Meshery to manage um, some service meshes." Okay, and you know what? I don't want to use a UI. As a matter of fact, maybe I just want to embed this in my pipeline, or I want to, whatever. I want to do some things with. Just, uh, I'm in a headless environment, which um, Robert, who's on the call, will say, um, hey, he runs a headless environment, and and he'll and uh, He'll say, I just wanted to manipulate some things using this CLI. And so first thing I want to do, um, first thing I want to do is deploy a service mesh. And then if, if he looks and he's like, okay, well, I see there's this meshery CTL system command with like all these things to control meshery and its deployment. Great. Okay, now where are the commands to control the deployment of a service mesh? I see this pattern command. I don't know what the hell that is, but then that's it. Okay, but there's, so this CLI can't deploy a mesh. Like, so yeah, that was the thought process. And that's why there's a mesh for CTL. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other comments to Swani before we move on? Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for any. Thank you for the demo. Uh, I guess this PR is ready to be merged. Uh, so moving on. Uh, Piyush, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. I'll steal your share screen. Start sharing mine. Okay, guys. So the first thing that is written here is what is food coverage? So this is more like a question rather than explanation. Do you guys know what is this comment that is always there in any PR you are raising? This code cove report. If anyone know about it, uh, heads up, please. Okay. So I, guess, I think. Uh, 
so this is a coverage report like uh, whenever we are writing tests so it covers certain number of lines in the actual code base so the code code is a report actually uh, computes that thing like how many code uh, have been written and how many code uh, lines have been like uh, passed out while uh, you know executing tests i believe yeah that's a really good explanation so that's what it is it is the coverage of how much we are actually testing out that the code is working perfectly in multiple user case scenarios okay so right now we can see that we have we have reached almost 18% and that is really low because 18% right, is really low we need to go up to 100% okay and we can see that these uh, this uh, percentage is being calculated by some of the uh, flags that is go integration tests and unit tests okay so if we will look into how this is calculated there are two or uh, three uh, data actions like unit tests is the one and then we have uh, ui integration test ui end to end test integration tests and there should be i think that one is from unit test i don't i should show you another pr that would be really better okay so that uh, that percentage is being calculated by these tests volume integration test yeah like unit test here and then this integration test so what we are like why are why am i explaining this uh, the reason is that this percentage is really less in comparison to our goal that is 100% and we have opened up a lot of issues but really few people are uh, trying to go around this okay i know this is hard uh, writing unit tests is really hard and that's why i think some smart folks have to heads up and uh, like grab these issues and try to tackle them and increase this percentage in our project okay so the next thing is and this is a special uh, like i would like to mention someone and the name is ashish tiwari ashish tiwari who heads up and uh, like started contributing to unit tests um, recently and the pr that i was showing earlier was from him and he has written a lot of lines and really gave time to this thing and we finally have one more contributor in this area so i would like to call like call out the contributors contributors here to like go around these uh, issues and start contributing to i know this is hard and that's why i am here to help you out while writing these uh, these tests but you have to start it like i know you guys can do this and you are really smart guys so these are the issues you should start writing tests by like picking up one by one uh, just for an example we can start up uh, like covering message ck system is really big i am not expecting you to write cover all of the sub commands on the system and just uh, you can start by picking up one of these like start with logs reset restart status update config okay and we can uh, gather more people who are inter like who are ex who, who will be experts in writing tests very soon in the community so that's what it was i hope some more guys are going to uh, dm me and like start asking how to write these unit tests uh thank you piyush uh, we actually have a Docu documented how we can write unit test uh, just share that in the yeah we have one document that will help you like with starting unit test uh, if you have any doubts uh, even after reading that document uh, you can call me out in any public channel in our, our slack and yeah uh, thank you piyush uh, uh sounds really good uh, uh thank you ashish for uh, taking some of this up so uh, the we have we have a doc that explains uh, how you can write unit tests i have shared that in the chat and uh, it's in the meeting minutes as well uh so uh, 
moving on to the next topic uh, husaina would you like to talk about some of your open prs oh yeah so the first one is about uh, uh, this issue was raised by some some time back so like uh, any cli command if you are uh, downloading it uh, basically it just downloads and leaves it at that but uh, with mystery cpl what we do is uh, we also go ahead and start the mystery uh, uh, sub uh, server and all sub systems so for for that purpose uh, i have added a, a flag to the uh, installer script uh, it basically minus n flag so if you can open navindu so uh, the yeah the, file change or it full uh, yeah so it has couple of fixes actually so uh, earlier it used to take only platform flag so i have added this uh, no deploy flag uh, so the behavior is in a way that we would continue to behave the same way unless you ask us not to deploy mesh so you can explicitly uh, choose that option by exporting a environment variable called deploy mesh tree equals to false so the issue with this option is that we are already passing one flag in the pipe so, uh, after uh, we pipe the mesh tree installer script so i was thinking of uh, having the usage uh, like this but it wouldn't be a one line or any more so uh, i was uh, looking for inputs uh, on this so as of now like uh, whatever uh, syntax they use which is documented what happens is uh, it would go ahead and uh, install meshri ctl command as well as uh, it would start uh, meshri server so if you want to just install the binary and not uh, start the server we have to export this deploy meshri equals to false it would be one line and then next line kind of so it would become uh, two line or eventually so who say no um that may, this is an ignorant question i suppose but the hmm, could the user also provide deploy meshery after the pipe in the same fashion that they they specify other options uh, i have tried that but it does not work because it thinks that deploy meshery's value is Two plus whatever platform equals two, right? So it considers the entire thing as a value. Uh, maybe I should try. Uh, yeah. uh, to say, yeah, or, it, in, uh, yeah, ports or something like that. An alternative. I mean, just to to you know help make. I don't know. I mean, this is a really insignificant thing potentially, but just like to the extent that. Or, or I don't know that this might be another solution is like to maintain consistency and to provide like a series of options that people can um, optionally, geez, options that they can optionally <laughs> provide. Um, it could be that it's just a value. It's just like if deploy, it could be just deploy meshery. If that val, if that word, that word, two words is present, then just by the fact that it's present that means it's true or or that means it's false in this case it would be not deploy meshery you know because the default is to deploy it that could be that might be a possibility uh, and once we uh, like you know uh, enter this command so is there a way like it will ask us whether to start if i yes or no if i enter yeah we didn't want to do that because already we are prompting for the platform right so it would be too many user interactions that's the reason i did not add the logic to prompt the user once again whether uh, he wants to just quit after installing the command so we could we, there is a 
place in the script where you can break right after the meshri ctl is installed we could present the user with a uh, prompt saying that i have installed meshri ctl do you want to start meshri also kind of thing right so it, this is exactly that same point right and uh, recently yeah. like you know correct me if i'm wrong does it really prompt for if i have to give platform as docker or kubernetes yes it does uh, if you can scroll up narendra i think you added the code in the very beginning right uh, because two days back yeah, i, I think tried it in to work it didn't after answer. line number 22 if you expand uh, yeah yeah i just scroll down there is a user prompt yeah here see if the platform is not specified so there is a user prompt Mm. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't prompt me. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. So uh, I, I, we could do the same thing for even uh, no deploy option, but I did not put this because it would be like too many prompts, right? So that's what we wanted to avoid, and we wanted to make some decisions. Uh, 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 on behalf of user also, right? So, so that's why we documented it, saying that if you want this to be skipped, export this uh, value to false. Otherwise, uh, it's the normal behavior as of today. Like whatever users are uh, comfortable with so far, right? So. and apart from this i have made couple of more changes in the script which is to suppress a uh, error log which comes and doesn't look good and another issue is uh, faced by shreyas uh, on popos where uh, uh, there was a permission issue uh, because uh, uh, meshri folder we were trying to create some files and it was throwing a permission issue so Mm. Yeah, so here if you see permission error error number 13 because uh, the user uh, did not have access to his own uh, home uh, a uh, username uh, slash meshri and meshri dot yaml file so to avoid that issue i have added some permissions uh, in the past so. also in this same screenshot we can see that move cannot move part right so that is a non issue because we eventually try it with uh, sudo command so that's not an error as such so i suppress that that's all yeah so and uh, just to be understand like whatever we do changes to this curl command does this changes also get effect in home brew or in other installation methods i think this is specific to uh, mac and uh, linux based uh, systems i am not sure about homebrew what uh, eventually which script it uses that is for mac yeah but i am not sure i mean it's like package manager kind of thing right it it would eventually use some uh, installer script right whether it is the same as this script or not i am not sure Oh, other feedback for Hussein. Good deal. There is. All right. So time check. We're gonna eat eighteen minutes. Yeah, I I'll be quick with this, and there are a couple of more uh, issues in my mind as well. So the other issue is uh, before start before opening up the. 
uh, local host and port number in the browser we had to do a check so as you suggested i have written some code to uh, do the http get kind of thing on the uh, endpoint before uh, opening it in the browser i am currently unit testing it so i'll push the changes for review maybe tomorrow uh, by end of this week and uh, after this i have one more issue which is about uh, uh, not prompting users for token path i think a uh, couple of others have done some changes where uh, the token path gets stored in the uh, config.yaml or link so wherever the token is being read i'll have to uh, proactively read from that path and uh, make those changes so it will be like one final step to achieve this without prompting the user for uh, tokens anymore so that's another issue that i have and there is a task pending on me for a long time so that is the client go a migration from cube buttons so i did not find time to set up my cluster and try out the changes so and i i'll get back to that after these small issues yeah so, uh, sounds good hosena uh, so the changes yeah i think that they they look good and uh, uh about the migration like yeah we need to get a move on that as well uh, since we are running out of time uh, uh we i will just jump on to the next item and uh, uh, we can catch up in slack so uh rudraksh uh, would you like to talk about the new actions yeah so and I'll, i'll start with the first topic i'll also share my screen i'm assuming that it's visible so talking about uh, release notes publisher <laughs> i've been a little tardy on this one cuz it's a little tie some to test this like make some change and create a pull request to merge it then create new tag and yeah all that so that's what's been blocking me for a while <laughs> you can see i i was on mesri 0.5.4518 days ago <laughs> i'm living in future so yeah i'll try this week i'll try fixing it this week if i can't i'll just remove my assignment like a gentleman <laughs> so that's on this one and meshri ctl smp action here it is <laughs> it's working for load test i mean the only thing that we need to figure out here is uh this i'll quickly show up what's actually happening when i try to use a performance profile for creating a performance test Messy, messy server panics. The test gets executed correctly, and yeah, that's it. Here, going, 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 and yeah. And then, did you? It. You know the reason for the panic? Um, I kind of no. I guess that's because of we not giving any. id while calling this endpoint and the current handler depends on the same functions that use an id for persisting this yeah i'm not much familiar with the endpoints here so i'm not sure hello okay, okay. Yeah, let's let's be sure to follow up especially as piyush is looking at well it, um both he's looking at the cli but we're also refactoring part of the api endpoints so when new you, you, that 
yeah it, hmm. is that crash happening when the test is pushed the res the results of the test is pushed yep so it's okay. trying to push to this endpoint but okay uh, this is somewhere on the remote provider but the remote provider doesn't recognize this and this does not have a unique identity of the performance profile so it does not know how to save it okay yeah, yeah let's follow up cool so i guess that would fix this and we'll have an smp action one item on this is uh, recognizing how we'll be loading service meshes as uh, we can't specify a service mesh in this configuration, right? We'll need a different configuration. This one is for a load test, but I couldn't find anywhere in the service mesh SMP protos where we'll be specifying a service mesh in this. Does anyone know that? Wait, say it again, where you would find a what? Um, so basically, we'll also, like, this is a performance profile for creating a load test, right? Mm. I just so, didn't hear what you said. Um, can you repeat yourself? I guess I lost Oh, oh sorry. I, I was just saying, I just didn't hear what you had said. That's all. That's uh, not the okay, okay. So yeah, this is for a load test. now. When we create a performance test using the UI, we see an option to specify a service mesh, right? And that's what we'll be using. Uh, it's disconnected. Sad. So we are basically where exactly we'll be specifying a service mesh in this configuration is what my question is oh yeah sure yeah the, um it um we don't yet uh, we need to there is i don't know that uh, uh, if there isn't an open issue let's get one open and, and get it going and it should be based off that proto that you're referring to off the service mesh performance spec so yeah cool so i guess this would be what will get SP action running I recently also added the deploy command for mesh CTL. I mean, mesh CTL mesh deploy command in the SMI conformance action. So no need to do that messy stuff. Just one thing to figure out here is what adapters currently are compatible with SMP Proto. So yeah, and create a checklist for that and probably we'll need to do some changes on the adapter side like this here understands the operation name to be osm and the mesh deploy command sends here open service mesh like compatible with smp protos and that's why we can't deploy osm using this and for other service meshes which use abbreviations as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, definitely. They need to fall in line with the spec for sure. Yeah, so I'll be creating a checklist for this so that we can track what all are working. And then we'll be having mesh deploy working here too, which would make it a little cleaner. Other than that, generating pattern components in mesh adapters, we have some contributors for this. Um, so, um, Rude Raksha, let me um, I let me switch up the topics if I can. I, to, uh, I didn't realize the long list of topics that we were going to have today, which is fantastic. But one of them, I'm going to feel I'm going to feel guilty. I had asked Robert to join for the first time today because he was working through a few issues and I thought it would be helpful to potentially have, um, to be able to share the screen. But let me do this if I could. Um, let, let's sh put shift to topics. Cool. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's good, we do need two lists for adapters for the S&P Proto, as well as for the approach to pattern management, right? Manifest versus Helm. Robert, welcome. Um, Guys, did, can we, did, let's talk about the bugs that Robert faced and whether or not they've been addressed. 
has there been a v0541 release made today uh no i think like we fixed the issue and i have yet to make a release i'll make it right now good um hey robert you want to take us through some of the, the bugs that you're facing i think um two of them i think have been addressed um as soon as the vendu clicks release we'll have i think each of them fixed other than the one in which was it the operator was having a crash loop back off. Yes, so uh, mm, if the release comes, then I will try to to to, to tell you if it's working. Um, currently, um, it was some so many problems, but I'm not sure if uh, I have not uh, not uh, make some problems with the platform. Uh, exactly, I'm using uh, MAS service. So uh, on the new Ubuntu, Ubuntu I um, install on a fresh OS uh, the machinery and I have problem with uh, uh, exactly with uh, running it for using Docker and using uh, using uh, Kubernetes platform. So um, only this one uh, logs who I have sent you as uh, only one way to 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 crash. So even if the the issue was <laughs> um, repaired or it's not uh, here, I will send you some. I can send you some next logs uh, and next some problems uh, that I uh, met <laughs> using Docker or other configuration. But uh, mm -hmm. as I said, I'm not sure that I uh, do everything wrong and uh, if, if exactly the whole platform works correctly. So maybe it's my fault by, by here. Well, it's definitely your fault. There's no way that there's any bugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good, okay. Good, you got that. That was sarcastic. Um, yeah, so uh, briefly, the, when you, you said Maz, um, Canonical's uh, Maz system, the the they're what they uh, uh if I'm, if i haven't seen it in a number of years but are we talking orange boxes maz like that well i didn't see them uh i mean um give me a minute uh, Uh, metal also service. Uh, yeah, 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 very yes. good. Yeah. I and don't. Uh, yes. Nope. Sorry. Go ahead. I didn't see them even because I'm uh, a new uh, one here. It's a new role for me, so um, that's maybe I um, to to get in touch with you. Uh, so we will work on in the next weeks, I think, and maybe months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Good. Yeah. Um, good. Then I'm glad that we're we're talking because as you familiarize more with your environment, um, the your environment, I, I don't know that folks have run meshery within before. There shouldn't be any um, any hangups there. We found occasionally there's a hangup with well, every time that you go to try a new platform and kind of guarantee compatibility and support with the platform, you occasionally run into challenges. The that metal as a service system that, that you have, is this an, and the, the Ubuntu VM that you're running, is that an OpenStack based um, internal like private cloud or is that something else? Uh, I'm not sure yeah. if, you, if I get understand your question. Um, yeah, it's like a server and uh, I'm um, in excluding a part of it and uh, making a virtual machine with five, four, four cores and some memory RAM and uh, can put it uh, any uh, operation system that they want to, to deploy it in a few minutes. So I can re really quick, we fast uh, set the uh, environment uh, um, hardware setting, hardware. Nice, okay, good, good. So to, to recap, I think off the top of my head, um, there were, you had given a great write-up, by the way, of the 
you know, the, your experience with in, installing and deploying Meshery is really, it's really helpful. You'd run across, and um, I think two bugs that are fixed as of just a few minutes ago, there's a release that's building now. So one of those was there was an XDG open error that was Meshery trying to open up um, the VM's X Windows environment, open up its browser. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't it doing a problem. Anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, checking now to, to not do that. And the other item that you bumped into was, uh, well, we were having a seg fault in a Meshery CTL command in the, uh, the system check command. And so um, that particular one has been addressed as well. Um, and then, so I, so I think that, that you'd bumped into two bugs. There was a, there's a third issue that you were facing that it which was around the, the crash loop back off that was happening for the operator. Yes, yes, but after um, after changing from five thirty eight, I think it it didn't happen. So so something it's uh, something changed. Um, so it's good. Uh, only service uh, this mesh mesh uh, adapter is twice crashing. Uh, I don't exactly why. I can uh, debug it more. So so uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, was it specific? Was it the same adapter that was that it crashed? No, no. It, before it was uh, the operator. Operator. It was uh, crashing about thirty seconds at eighty times per per uh, per twenty minutes. I think. Oof, yeah. Uh, so so it, it 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 looks like he never get gets up. So it crashed constantly. Yeah. For the. By the way, great. So, so I'll say it again, like the diagnostics that you sent, um, very helpful. There's one, there's a command that is actually good for everyone on the call to hear. Um, it, it's kind of, uh, Nivendu and, um, had actually worked in this area that it's um, Meshery CTL system logs. Um, and, I, and I think you can, I mean, it's, it's more or less the same thing as running a, a kubectl um, logs, but, uh, but you can use it to retrieve logs, both of Meshery's server and of the adapters, which is some, sometimes convenient. To, um, I think one of the challenges that, that we've discussed or one of yeah, that we've discussed in the community before that is, I shouldn't say, use the word challenge, but rather one of the things that we've um, put out there for anyone to pick up and potentially work on is well, a small is enhancing Meshery CTL to have a small diagnostics um, reporter, like a small diagnostics collector, so that it becomes a little bit easier just to, you know, bundle up the some logs and send them in. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And so, so, so for any, yeah. I just only want to add that uh, also there, <laughs> there was an issue that there is no uh, unzip. Uh, if, if there is uh, no unzip uh, package, then it also doesn't uh, install uh, the machinery. But it's a small thing that I didn't uh, say it to before. No, let's get let's do let's get it. Yeah, anytime <laughs> that we're calling out to an external dependency like that, we can't assume that it's there. Totally. Thanks for calling it out. Well, okay, uh, thanks, so. thanks for walking us through that, Robert. Um, yeah, the I think you'll have success with the V0541 release, I think. I'm not sure why the service mesh adapter was crashing, so that, but, but that's great. Good, 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 good. Okay, thank you too for a quick <laughs> response. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then, uh, good. Oh, actually, Robert, I don't know if you're at leisure to to share this a, a bit, but of or why are you using Meshery? Or, or you know, to, the the community of contributors here is always hungry for feedback, or like it's always feels nice for them to hear someone using the 
using their work. I don't know if you're able to, to say much about things that you're, you know, do, you know uh, trying to do with Meshery or. Yes, um, so how I say uh, before, so I'm a new role here, so it's a um, new engineer um, working on performance. Uh, and I also, also uh, our goal is also to, to benchmark some uh, microservices and uh, service mesh. Um, so um, we we are going to to gonna to check this out and uh, say it if it's uh, good to to use it. Cool, cool, good. You've come to the right place. Good. Here. Yeah. How, by the way, how uh, how fresh are you in your in this new role? Uh, exactly started uh, this month, so. Uh, four weeks, I can say, but it's also introduced and so on. So, cool, cool. Okay, Ooh, um, good. Yeah, thank you for that, Robert. Uh, that's great. Um, Navendu, I uh, I interrupted Rudraksh and the whole stream of things. Uh, back to you. Back to you. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Uh, uh, Rudraksh, would you like to? Uh, can you like uh, and talk about the other items you have? Uh, but before that, uh, uh, we are at the top of the hour, so uh, we are already four minutes late. So I want to thank everyone for joining the meeting, and uh, I guess we will go for a bit more. Uh, so if you if you want to uh, jump off, uh, uh, you can. Uh, thank you for joining and. Uh, We'll see you next time. And uh, we have meetings uh, tomorrow, Thursday and uh, Friday. So Thursday, we have the newcomers call and Friday, we have a community meeting. So be sure to join that. I'll see you guys. Uh, back to you, Rudraksh. Yep. So I'll be... I'll be resuming from generating path and components in machinery adapter. We have a sample workflow here. It basically fetches the manifest from those releases like uh, service message release. And watch this one. Yeah. So just for the latest release target, if the manifest and using either the command line tool for the service mesh or from GitHub repository, and then generates workloads and OM definitions based on that. This one is a little bit old, so I can work on one very recently. So, yeah, there is a call for volunteers on this, and we always have some convo going on about it in the mystery adapters channel. Basically, we'll be using this for providing novel use cases like air gap deployments, and also for making sure that versioning is ensured properly in mystery adapters. So, yeah. Also, we'll be soon trying to integrate this dirty bass script, <laughs> hacky stuff, into a kind of a go binary or a better thing, an operation in the adapter itself so that we can call it and fetch stuff. Some questions recently rose about extracting service mesh manifest. That's what the contributors have been asking. I'm reporting, I'll be listing some of them here. Currently, these are the only ones that I know about. And yeah, you can take a look here if you face any problem. That's great. Uh, Rudraksh is the, um, if that is in the community drive, I'll, I'll definitely jump in and uh, yep. help out. Yep, it is. Hmm. Ah, well, 
అని నా అప్పుడు <laughs> so some instructions on this were specified and as you can see all of these issues have been closed and people have taken them up some of them have prs open and are under review while some of the components continue to use the old mesh kit errors so we will at least need them using the new style mesh kit errors before adding this workflow to them for example some adapters like cpx and yeah i'm not so cpx and and if yeah if it's any if it's only cpx and octarine um we're okay because yeah the, those two the octarine adapter is um needs to be deprecated uh and the citrix service mesh adapter the cpx adapter um it needs to be up leveled to incorporate um mesh kit holistically not just mesh kit errors but mesh kit itself and so the maintainer that works the citrix engineer who's the primary maintainer of that he um he's going to need some help understanding mesh kit but that's fine um, yeah. other than that nginx too yeah nginx and then there's a the starter for app app mesh and tanzu service mesh so those four it, we will leave by the wayside for the moment until until this uh the the generation of pattern components is until other priorities are done like until we have workflow that you know generates these pattern components as part of the build until we have runtime functions that generate patterns as part of you know the the running adapter for those first eight adapters that i think you have in the spreadsheet now so you've got your priority straight or rather you have the rest of our priority straight for us i guess <laughs> nice cool so uh, yeah. okay so you have a call for so ashish um tiwari mr unit test or mr personality as some of us like to call him are uh he is on he's going to work on the runtime stuff and suggest the path forward um sayatan and you are both <clears throat> working through and shreyas mishra is working through workflow based you know build time based pattern component generation excellent you just made a call for anyone else who wants to work on um a workflow based generation of pattern components for like either the traffic mesh adapter or a different adapter that spreadsheet that you just showed maybe if you drop a link to it in slack and then just put a column called name or you know a, a signee and people can sign up if they want to go try it on the other ones other than that given the time let's move on to the next agenda item if we can yep cool thank you for this who's next Hello. Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Oh, Abi, there he is. All right. Oh, man. Okay. Let's do it. Oh. Oh, so, show and tell time. Yeah. Uh, how can I share my screen? Yeah. So, uh this is the like uh new navigator design. I uh, uh like there are few fire changes and few are remaining uh, to be made uh, one is like uh, adding collapsible button like uh, according to be called to be better so uh that is like uh, the new design for navigator 
so we have system dashboard and after that like following uh, life cycle management so why it has gone uh, bump since uh, meshy is itself a uh, service mesh management layer so that's why it is uh, focuses more on like managing services networks and all these things so that's why uh, it, it, it's the top priority and other than that uh, we have like uh, performance and profile performance etc so conformance is now uh, disabled for some reason. I don't know, uh, since uh, both are on the same link, like mesh interface and conformance. So, and other than that, like uh, that was the pre uh, previous design for the navigation menu. Uh, like uh, there are a bunch of links that are, are helpful, very helpful, but still uh, uh, is not in uh, like regular use by the, um, uh, you, by the designer operator, whoever is using mesh so that's why these have got a less attention in some sense by just uh, uh, contracting these buttons in one item uh, so that uh, if, you, if you want some help if you want to like uh, open issue you want to see such things then you can just click on this question mark button and uh, the items will be populated for you to get help and you can just uh, navigate there other than that uh, it is responsive for the time being and uh, yeah so this is a quite uh, this is the thing that I was working on the past few days. Other than yeah, one thing, yeah. yeah. So here, like, uh, the question mark, like, I don't, like, is it very intuitive, like, uh, when you collapse it, like. I'm sorry, just one. Mr. Popular is getting a phone call. I see. <laughs> it was not on site. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, you are asking something. Sorry. Yep, I was just thinking whether we could change that question mark like onto something because it uh like it okay. Yeah, uh yeah, yeah, it, it's I'm not sure but like uh, it's just my opinion that it's it doesn't yeah, it definitely uh, showing something more than the help. Uh, we can change it, but we have to like see what could be the alternative for it, uh, for this question mark. That was uh, primarily designed for the purpose of help. And that's why like this icon is called also, it's also it, this is also called help icon. So that's why it is there for now. Okay, fine. Yes. Oh, um, Abhi, did, Abhi, you don't, have, oh, hey, that's looking. Nice. Yeah. Um, so two two questions. Um, one is, do you happen to have um, a system running that also shows the uh -huh. patterns, applications, and filters, the other configuration menu? Uh, no. Uh, like I was literally trying. Like yeah, this is the uh, in cluster Kubernetes. Like this this uh, thing is running inside the Kubernetes itself, and I was only having like these menu items not other than that uh, other yet i'm like uh logged in with uh this mesh provider token so yet i'm having problem in getting that mesh map thing like uh, beside these okay sure yeah hey we'll, we'll help or what somebody will help you with that for sure yes 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 i need help in that and other than that like i have opened a discussion forum uh for uh, one, with one question like if uh, someone knows the answer for it or like it would be really really helpful Matt, uh, well abhi um i'm not sure what you get for bringing up the discussion forum in the call but you've won something <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah so I, I i was just about to like uh, get the attention on this forum so yeah that's so all the you know uh, pro out there so just like answer this question as if since i'm i'm just waiting for is solving one more issue that i was uh facing uh with something like if i can show it now uh in the life cycle management part yeah so these cards are not aligned properly and uh, that's something that i can solve it very easily so that's why uh, i was about to get the this istio thing uh, right here like the successful adapter configuration uh, but I'm not getting that uh, since I'm only getting this, uh, you know, uh, weird things. Sure. So, uh, yeah. Good. Good. So, okay. So the so for everyone else that 
um, is looking at the newly refactored menu, understand that there's another top level menu. So um, Abhi, if you switch back to the, to your new work, there's another top level menu. So the top level menus, oh, hey, you've got system dashboard, I didn't even, yeah. sweet. So um, by the way, did briefly, if you could, the dash, uh, you know what, the, if you could just call, uh, never mind. Anyway, there'll be another top level menu called configuration and under configuration. So the top level menus right now are system dashboard, life cycle, performance, which we need to, I guess we might need to outdent that a little bit or like remove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess uh, there's problem with the icon itself. Uh, since everything is aligned properly, like I have not. Uh, it's got some, it's got some yeah, extra yeah. internal padding. Okay. Yeah, internal padding. Cool. So we the, have to check that. But so there's the, there's life cycle, like life cycle management, performance management, conformance. Then there's a fourth one called configuration that we'll we'll get there. But it'll have filters, applications, patterns, and and then if someone is also running any plugins, any additional plugins into Meshery like MeshMap, then there'll be that as well. And then, so consequently, it's like, woof, we're overloading the user with you know, quite a few inputs, um, which initially showing everyone all the, the full list of meshes that they can manage, that's great for discoverability. So the user can see the power of the tool and you know, peruse its functionality. But over time, and, and we've hit that inflection point in which it's time to refactor and condense a bit or organize. And so Abi, can you tell everyone, can you briefly describe the sort of next steps for squishing some of this down a little bit? Or are we, are we thinking about an accordion here or, or what might be next? Yeah, so uh, we are thinking of adding a collapsible menu item, like this life cycle is a parent element and these are their children. So we can just add a collapsible button so that if we can uh, click on it, then all these things may uh, collapse in one life cycle and the other uh, things get uh, their importance. So uh, that's what we are thinking for now. And the design is, uh, uh, is under cooking. So, yeah. Other, but by the way, I think Nitish was probably for everyone who's on the call. Everyone, by the way, everyone always gets to have an opinion on UI because everybody uses the UI. And, and so, and, and so everyone gets to have an opinion. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, mo most of, most of you are all wrong with those opinions, but, uh, <laughs> or rather, rather, um, uh, Nitish was hitting on something that's, you know, like probably an open question and something for everyone to think on, if you would, as this goes out into the edge release very soon, is that help button is for my part, I, I would I'll express this opinion. I will say that um, its behavior is is quite nice. The the sort of you click to it and it expands and contracts. When the drawer, the whole menu drawer collapses, it also behaves accordingly. It it um, scoots itself on over. Are you able to collapse it while the drawer is collapsed? Like, are you able to retract? The, okay. Oh, that's cool. Um, now note that like, um, okay. So, but the thing that still kind of bugs me, and I think Nitish might've been encircling this thought is if you expand the drawer again, or the, yeah, um, and you collapse the, uh, you tuck its belly back in, you, you, so expand the drawer and then click the help button one more time if you would, cool. The placement of this help button. Hmm. And or the size of it or the, like it is a different behavior, right? It's, I guess eventually if an accordion is retrofitted for the menu itself and that accordion for all the menu items up above is, you know, vertically expanding and contracting. Um, then when you click on the help button and it expands and contracts, like, okay, you're, you're, the user is getting accustomed to expanding and you know, collapsing and expanding. And so it's not necessarily odd that, that something like that would happen. 
but it is unique. You know, it is the only button in the entire UI that does that currently. There's a visual topology mesh map. It's a plugin to Meshery that we talk about occasionally that um, is likely to have some similar user experience paradigms included. But so I don't I don't have anything to I just wanted to raise it up as food for thought for people as a go forward. So Abby it's looking good. It's looking great. Anybody else have feedback for Abby? Oh like is it just me or whether the help button being on the bottom left might be a better uh, or symmetrical way. It's just it's just bugging me internally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have this bot uh, in very initial time. So if I can open the Slack, and I had uh, posted a screenshot uh, directly to Lee. So. Uh, So yeah, there it is. Uh, right <laughs> there. Yep. Yep. You just yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So it's looking like this. Uh, when we are just putting help button in the left portion. So that's look. That was uh, kind of looking odd to me and to Lee, of course. Yeah, it's odd. I was thinking more like towards the bottom than than. Yeah, I get your point. It might be conflicting. Yeah, so, uh, hmm. yeah, so one another design that we had previously was like uh, putting that head to head with the collapsible menu and here like uh, using that zoom effect. Uh, but the one more problem that uh, we are getting with this approach is like uh, whenever I'm clicking on, like whenever I'm hovering on this, so there would be uh, something like uh, this thing, like this, uh, uh, this see below right so uh yeah so this will hinder the overall uh uh i will display get your point to be honest. so uh actually uh this was the previous design uh yeah. before that so it was kind of looking uh more better in some sense uh to me at least and uh, yeah so the one major problem that we had with this design uh that is not addressed in in, in this part like here is whenever I'm hovering on this, so there would be, uh, uh, you know, the link that will be displayed right below here, right here. Oh, okay. Like, like here, like here, we are getting that thing. So uh, that will overall, you know, hinder the icon display or icon. Uh, okay. But that's I... why it is here, like. <laughs> sure, I don't mind. And one last suggestion would be to like. You can change the color of the help button to something like which we have for the buttons which you see in install service mesh or the the background of the system dashboard button, something like that to define that it's a clickable button so and not selected to, button. Changing it to a more brighter color, uh, are you asking for that? Probably dark blue, not light blue since it will conflict with the current dashboard thing which was selected. Okay, okay, okay. You are asking for like uh, to, you know, make it uh, feel like it is clickable uh, by, you know, uh, giving the some accent, blue accent to it, right? Yeah, but not that one because that one specifies a thing which we are currently looking at in the dashboard. Yes. So, yeah, we can look into it. I don't think it will uh, get any uh, color confusion or whatever uh, inconsistency, but uh, yeah, can look into it. So thanks for that. And uh, do I have uh, any other suggestion? Yeah, the only other one, yeah, you, yeah, the only other one that is something to explore is to Drew's point about offsetting the button by changing its color is potentially to consider off, uh, the offsetting of those two by changing the chevron's color, potentially. So playing between those two. And, and the, the thing is, is like, 
great. I mean, like if you it, um, the chain, it, whatever we arrive at here sets precedent for um, the same UX paradigm that we would use across other similar um, you know components. So we're, we're training the user here with what to expect. So good. Okay, let's go. Let's go explore that. And uh, in the meantime, let's merge. <laughs> okay, cool. Bobby, nice work, huh? Great. If uh, other you. people want. Yeah. All right, who, what, who else do we miss? Anybody else on the agenda? I have, but if there is time, then it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm like it. Please. Okay, so let me just share the screen. Okay. okay, so now let me uh, just tell you the redirect URL just works okay for me. So, and but there is some more issues with that. So, if you see this, this is behind my uh, ingress gateway, and when you just click on this, it works. So yeah, there was some confusion. So I forgot to add a few more like you know paths. That is why it was not working. But oh, sorry. But when I am going over to Messery and yeah, so here now it says like you know there is no mess installed. And when I checked on this, so this mesh sync is not being enabled state. So if you see in my command line also, I don't see any mesh sync that has been installed. I do not know what exactly wrong with this. So, um, Udkarsh, are you, um, do you want to comment here? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I'm not sure. Um, uh, when operator comes up, it should actually spin up both uh, broker and mesh thing. So, I'm not quite sure what's causing that. Yeah, so because uh, last time when Obisek gave me, he has given me the Helm chat with an G folder. When I did that, that was working fine. But when I'm installing with Helm for the testing purpose, so it's something uh, like you know, going wrong with this matching not being installed. And is there a manual way to install this mesh sync from command line? Yeah, actually, there are manifests which we can actually apply manually to spin up a uh, mesh sync. But uh, yeah, uh, and yeah, so to answer your question, there are actually manifests which you can apply manually to spin up mesh sync, which we actually do sometimes for debugging. Okay. Uh, I'll point out uh, to that. They are, they are in meshery operator, if I'm not wrong, on the samples. Uh, meshery operator is already installed, in fact. Uh, actually, I was talking about the report as a. Uh, oh, okay. It has a YAML file. Yeah, so that's, that's all I wanted to just tell. But yeah, so one thing is uh, like, you know, the custom URL does work. Thanks to the course and Lee and all the members who has inve invested their time on this. Okay, I was having so many other conversations. I met. did. Um, did you say that the configurable callback URL is behaving as you is doing its job, or no? Yeah, it is working. Cool. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so earlier it didn't work because of some of the typos which I did, and I. Uh, Rechecked it with Utkos and he has directed me to the right uh, documentation. Okay. 
Yeah, and, and the same also I have documented also for other oh. Okay, perfect. Um, very good. Okay. Uh, anybody else have, have items today? Yep, I guess if no one has anything, then we can. Yeah. Actually, yeah, let's uh, wait. Let me, how do we do this? Let me stop the recording, maybe start the recording again so that people can, like, this is a big deal, I think, if, you, if, if what you're about to unveil is what I think you're going to unveil. So, um, and people will want to see it and watch it separately. So, one second. Just before that, like, I was actually facing the same issue that uh, Samir has been telling me. Like, uh, my machine was also not uh, getting, uh, it was not running automatically. So, I don't think if it's relevant to uh, the thing that Samir was discussing, but I'm also facing the same thing right now. Yeah. Um, you're still able to demo without it, though? Or? Yep, actually, uh, what I've done is that I've made it such that if it is not, uh, if message operator is not there, then you won't have, you won't be able to move to the next step. So it's currently stuck over there. Oh, okay. uh, I can do one thing, like I can manually hard code it to change for now, just for the demoing purpose. Sure. Cool.